Brilliant. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome for joining or thank you for joining this session this morning. Um, as Michael said, my name is Dan. I've uh, I've worked for a company called Illuminate Learning um, as a Microsoft trainer, but I'm here supporting Innovate today um, to help kind of elevate everything they're doing and talk about all the wonderful world of Microsoft 365. Um, now, I've had a history nearly for a decade now of working either directly for Microsoft or uh, alongside Microsoft as a technical trainer um, and as an end user trainer, as an adoption specialist. So really, really well versed um, in the M365 world. And actually, um, it's really, really interesting for me to kind of see where M365 has gone in the last kind of 10 years or so, or especially since lockdown. Um, now, just for today, uh, we're going to be going through the next kind of 55 minutes um, overlooking M365, some of the features. We'll bring some of the stuff to life, uh, specifically looking around security uh, and actually some of the reasons we could be looking at M365 as a, as a complete solution, but also how you can work with Innovate on that one as well. Um, as Michael said, if there's any questions, please pop it into the Q&A. Um, I'll be kind of having a look at those at the end just, just to um, answer anything if anyone has any questions there. But obviously, please feel free to post it throughout uh, or throughout the presentation uh, myself and Michael will be monitoring that so without further ado let's crack on and let's have a little look um okay hopefully everyone can see my screen um so what we're going to be covering today so we're going to have a look at Windows 10 and the support and what that means um what are the key challenges that we have currently in today's climate um post-covid really because I see COVID as a defining point and a changing point in all of our landscape IT wise. Um, how can we use M365 to reduce your IT complexity and your cost? Um, how does M365 enable secure productivity and what is that and how can you get ready for Copilot? Uh, which in case anyone hasn't heard or any or seen of, Copilot is kind of the hottest thing on everyone's lips at the moment it is Microsoft's newest AI offering into the commercial landscape. So let's have a look first of all at Windows 10 end of support. And what does end of support mean? Uh, well, it means exactly that. Um, Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro is going end of support uh, in October 2025, which is next year, which isn't that long away. Um, and if we think about it, sometimes buying new devices can be a bit of a uh, a drawn out process can be a process that we need to have a look at what do we need for the next four years um what do we need for the next uh, kind of device do we need them to be more mobile do we need them to be more powerful better screens etc cetera, etc cetera. but why am microsoft doing that because it seems that windows 7 went into support only about five years ago well i think the overarching theme throughout today um is that uh windows 10 going into support is all about security um, and when we have a look at some of the M365 features and some of the extra um, kind of rationales behind the M365 offering, security underpins everything. But quite frankly, when Windows 10 was built uh, and was released back in 2019, I think it was, um, or 2015, actually, when Windows uh, 10 came out, um, it was told uh, that Windows 10 would be the last operating system that Microsoft ever released. It would only ever have updates. And I went around probably for a good four or five years telling everyone um, that Windows 10 would be the last operating system that was ever released. Now I'm here 10 years later saying Windows 10 is going into support and they have a new Windows coming out. But the main reason is of security. And the reason is it's just not good enough for what we have in the world today. Now, when Windows 10 was, was brought out, especially for the working world, it had some great features on there. It had Defender, um, it had some of the, uh, the, the antivirus and some of the internet security little parts for built in. Um, but the landscape was different. You know, and we mentioned COVID a minute ago, which was four years ago, which is crazy. Um, but the way we worked was different. We mainly worked in offices. We didn't have um, shared Wi-Fi as much. We didn't work from home. We didn't have a mobile workforce. Um, security wasn't that big of a focus 10 years ago as it is now, especially with the rise of some of the cybersecurity stuff. So all this stuff means is that Microsoft realized they couldn't just keep upgrading Windows 10 with the extra security features. They needed to bring out a new product, which is Windows 11. So Windows 11 now has more security built in than there's ever been before. Um, it's got something called TPM. Now, I'm not going to go uh, too techy. I could go as techy. I'm a level 10 geek. I could go really techy on this. Um, but a TPM chip basically means that biometric, biometric security is a standard on all Windows 11 devices. You know, things that we use in our personal life, biometric security, facial recognition, MFA, encryption, all this stuff is now a standard on our work devices. One of the big things as well, 99.6% uh, of all applications that run on Windows 11 will, sorry, run on Windows 10 will run on Windows 11 now as well. And for the 0.4% that don't, uh, Microsoft will pay for them to be developed. 
um, and also the minimum requirements for products from Microsoft Point in order to run their operating system has been stepped up as well. So we're looking at things like four gig RAM, 64 gig storage. You know, all these like entry level products now we're looking at mean that you as a business, when you deploy Windows 11, you know you are getting a device that will last, a device that can handle a lot being thrown at it, and also a device that will be there for the next four or five years. Now, our world has changed. Uh, this slide on there, that, that is an understatement, right? And um, I, I was chatting, I was doing a webinar yesterday and I was, I was chatting to one of the presenters before. Um, four years ago, lockdown happened, right? And that was crazy. And I remember literally the moment we got locked down um, and going out and thinking, oh no, uh, this, this is crazy. I was at Microsoft at the time. I was doing a, a live stream that evening that, that Boris Johnson came out and said we all had to, to uh, be locked in our house. Um, and I thought, actually, I sat back down and thought, actually, working from home, a lot of things are going to change for a lot of people. And if we have a think about it, that being locked down did change a lot. You know, we went from being having almost no Teams meetings at all. And, uh, you know, I, on there, I was, I was part of Teams when it first launched back in 2017, I think it was. Um, even back then, I maybe had one or two Teams meetings a week. Now, post COVID, post lockdown, post uh, this instant collaboration world we live in, I have Teams meetings about having Teams meetings about a meeting that's next week. All right. Lockdown put us into a place where working from home, uh, a lot of companies found themselves in accidental cloud. And what do I mean by accidental cloud? Well, accidental cloud is working in an environment that necessarily they may not have had a plan for. They didn't have security in the right place. We didn't know how to use Teams. We didn't know how to share documents correctly. We didn't know how to use things such as SharePoint and cloud computing. And actually, some of the stuff on the screen here, you know, we need to make sure that everyone feels uh, included in webinars, in meetings and stuff like that. How do we do that? How do we make sure we have a stable, solid platform to do it? How do we use things such as, you know, webinars? How do we host massive meetings where we can still keep that level of professional communication with the customers? Um, how do we enable seamless work from anywhere? Because working from anywhere could be working from, um, it could be working from home. You know, some people still work from home now. We have a split environment. We have a hybrid environment. Uh, we don't have the luxury that everyone's sat behind a network switch and behind a um, a, a firewall and a network manager that's kind of like Gandalf and is going to protect everyone. We don't have that now. So we need to make sure that all of our staff are protected. We need to make sure that everyone has um, instant access to the files and documents they need, but we're not compromising the security side of it, which is a huge thing. You know, GDPR, NIST, all this stuff that now is prevalent um, is a massive, massive focus. And we need to make sure that we're we're kind of up to speed on that. And also, as well, how do we keep data secure? 64% of SMBs allow employees to access work data on personal phones and computers, right? This, um, I've been a network manager before, this sends shivers down my spine when we allow people to access data from work devices and personal devices because personal devices aren't always secure. We can't control how they're managed. We can't enroll them through Intune onto our, um, onto our network. We can't ensure secure policies. But People have more and more expensive phones now. People want to access off their own devices. So we still need to make sure that those people can access the files, but we retain our security on there. You know, some big challenges now. And simply, Windows 10 wasn't good enough for it. Windows 11 can, Windows 11 can solve some of those problems, but also M365 can complement that completely. Now, if we have a look at uh, some of the security stuff um, at the moment, some massive things on here. 300% um, increase in ransomware attacks in the last couple of years. Um, that's a no-brainer. Um, literally, and we'll go through what each of these are, but ransomware is effectively where someone locks you out of your system and they will ask for a reward or for crypto or for something off the back of it uh, to be able to um, unlock your networks. Um, to, to put this into context, this cost, you can buy this now online for probably $40. You can go on, I, I do security journaling for Microsoft, very well versed in how people buy these. So for, yeah, for $40, whether you buy it in Litecoin or Bitcoin, go on a website and you can just uh, lock out someone's entire business system for that. And then you pay them 40% of whatever that you get paid to unlock it. Uh, one in four SMBs um, have had a security breach in the last year, and that's reported. 70% um, think cyber threats have become more of a risk. Now, all this stuff on this slide, I'm not here to scare you. Um, I probably could do an hour long presentation on, on you know, just, just security alone and just this slide here. Um, but we need to think now, why are people attacking us more? Why is cyber uh, crime going through the roof? And the reason is data, right? Data is a commodity much, and we need to think of it the same as gold. We need to think of it the same as um, platinum or anything like that. 
And the reason data is a security is because it's got two things. One, financial reward for the back of it. Two, uh, it can bring a company down if people don't comply. Right, say, for example, I run a company, someone hacks into my system. It's not like it used to be on the films where we see people sat with 10, 15, 20 monitors. There's big black and green text going down the screen and you know, frantically typing away. And it can be as simple as just trying to guess people's passwords now. And if someone can get onto your system, all they have to do is get a couple of bits of information, phone you up and say, look, unless you pay me, we're going to release this information and your business will suffer. Could suffer reputational damage, could suffer from GDPR fines or anything like that. But there's a huge thing that goes off the back of it. And data can be traded on, on the um, dark web as well. Um, now, if anybody is super, super interested, please reach out to, uh, to Michael and Innovate. And I'm more than happy to, to just send you some stuff over after this around it. Um, but finding data on the internet isn't as hard as you think. Um, and literally, I'm just going to uh, just show you something very quickly now on this screen here. In fact, I won't show you. Um, I'll tell you what it is. Um, but people think that in order to, to get passwords and in order to get everything like this, data leaks, you have to go on the dark web. You don't. Um, within 10 seconds, I could type one website onto to Google uh, and find 5,000 American Express numbers. That's Amex numbers, passwords, PIN numbers, uh, addresses, balances, all this stuff. Right. And that's American Express, which is quite bad. But if you think of things like our passwords and why we need uh, to, to worry about this and why we need to worry about um, being secure is that I'm just going to ask you a little question. You don't have to answer. However, how many things do you use the same password for? Right, and I, 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 I'm guilty of this sometimes. I'll, I will log on. And if there's like a generic password web or a generic website that's not too secure, Right about, I'll use the same password, but actually I've got 20 or 30 websites which use the same generic password. And if one of them gets leaked once, we can go and check it somewhere or we can see a data leak. Actually, have I used that on a work account? Because someone will have. And actually, if we can get onto that work account, is it, are we able to then use that to uh, go somewhere else and get more data? So password, list technology, all this stuff it is kind of massive up. And Microsoft can help fix this problem for your business. Now, what people don't realise is that Microsoft um, is one of the largest security companies out there. But when people think of Microsoft, they think of it being an uh, operating system, they think of it being Microsoft or OneDrive or Xbox. People don't realize how big the security impact Microsoft has in there. And if you have a look at kind of what they're investing into it and what they do, um, you can see they stand out massively. And there's a security solution for your business. It's actually quite a nice uh, way of looking at it. Um, I just heads up, like I said, I don't work for Microsoft anymore, so this is not a Microsoft pitch. Um, I am a security journalist. I look at this from quite a, a top-down view, but the moves that Microsoft are making are insane. So if we have a look on here, 32 billion emails are blocked annually by Microsoft being malicious. 43 trillion signals every single day uh, across the entire globe are being monitored by Microsoft. When we say signal, that could be any part of the Microsoft infrastructure. That could be going to and from an Azure uh, website, it could be a SharePoint access, it could be a Teams message, could be an email, could be a link, could be a website, could be a video you've watched, a file you've received, anything at all. And effectively what Microsoft has is when you're part of that network and even when you're just logged onto it now, some of the basic parts that go through on the operating system is Microsoft is basically one giant infrastructure. Okay, it monitors everything. If something happens somewhere around the world on a different device, it will instantly be updated and remedied out to the rest of it. You have the benefit of joining that largest infrastructure. And the fact that Microsoft have the identity space nailed with Active, Ident uh, Active Directory or Entra, but I refuse to call it Entra, um, it means they're able to constantly monitor and do stuff like this. You know, on the, on the left, on the right hand side, $20 billion investment in the next five years is huge. Right, they're investing 20 billion um, in order to combat cybercrime. Some other companies that we use and some other companies out there won't even have that as a turnover. Right, so there's a massive thing on there um, and it works seamlessly as well. AI powered tools, um, we have a massive, massive part um, of AI coming up as well, especially in the security side, you know, um, and, and actually this also ties nicely into how the landscape has changed. Um, you know, 64% of people don't have enough time to do their work after, after COVID and after lockdown. And I would probably ask if anyone in this group does have that. I'll be very surprised if anyone does. Three times uh, increase in, in Teams meetings, and 70% of people would like to delegate AI to uh, to lessen their workloads. Right, so we can kind of see this bit of a trend here. We need more security. The way we work has changed. The way we share documents has changed. The way we communicate has changed. Um, and actually, we need to catch up in our business life now. Let's get on to it. Let's have a look on it. Do more with less. Um, I say this words probably 50 times a week, 
do more with less. Um, and yeah, I've been a part of Microsoft. I was there, so I've seen it evolve and it really does help us in our business on there. So what is M365? Because over the last couple of years, we've had Office 365, we've had Office 2016, Office 2019 Business Premium. Then we had Microsoft Business Home. There's been a lot of different confusing things it's called. Now we have Microsoft 365. Microsoft 365 is a cloud solution. Okay, it's a cloud solution that enables you to work from anywhere. It includes all your applications, it includes all your security, and basically out of the box uh, solution for your business that you can be up and running and be able to collaborate, seamlessly integrate and run a business going forward. Okay, it includes all the stuff you need. Uh, we're gonna have a look in fact, what it actually brings in. So you've got business basic and business standard in the mid in the middle. Um, you see you get your apps in there, but the one we are focusing on at the moment is Microsoft 365 Business Premium. First of all, you get your Teams, Exchange, OneDrive and SharePoint. Um, you get all your applications on there. So Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Publisher, Access, um, and then a lot more on top of that as well. Um, but also you get your security. Right now, if we see the difference between business standard and business premium um, is the comprehensive security. First of all, you get Intune, and uh, enables you to basically put policies on devices. Uh, Azure Information Protection, which we'll look at, um, Active Directory, Virtual Desktop, and Defender. That on its own, the security part on the bottom of that is worth about £60 a month because that can replace every part of your security need that you have in your business at the moment and you're getting that for an extra £7.80 a month. There's the wraparound services that go for it so Innovate would work with you on that to build it and to manage it um, but there is a huge huge opportunity here to make your life a lot more simple in how you work but be a lot more secure and actually hit things such as GDPR compliance, secure scores and everything else from Microsoft. Now we mentioned actually what you get with it. Well, I said you get extra stuff on business premium. This is all the stuff you do get on business premium. Hey, bookings, uh, clip chat, video editing, stuff like that. You get your OneDrive, a terabyte storage, loop, planner, power pages, um, your SharePoint, which is just insane on its own. Um, stuff on it, Viva for your insights, everything is included in this. And really, if you were to compare this to any other product, if you were to go for a third party solution, you'd be looking at £45 a month, and that's just on here. However, if you go into Microsoft Business Premium, you get that for, for a lot less price, but the features are in there as well. So let's have a look at what the benefits are, the features of this, and why it's such an attractive proposition, and why working with Innovate could help you move forward on it. So, first of all, it's one solution for productivity and security. Well, I don't know about you if anyone resonates, but I'm going to go off on a tangent here. I hate it at home when I've got my gas with one company, my electric with another company, um, I've got my water with another company, I've got my car tax, my car insurance, I've got to make different payments all throughout the month. I probably do forget one at least once a month um, and I've got to log on to different websites to do stuff. Well, I've got to take me to readings, I've got to do things, it's actually quite hard to manage. And from a business perspective, it's worse than that. We've got internet security, we've got antivirus, we've got office, we've got, uh, we might have device payments, we've got service charge payments, we've got everything else going in. Um, we can bring all of that in, into one single payment through Innovate on there. Um, cloud platform simplifies deployment and gets you up and running quickly. Doesn't matter anywhere in the world where people are, stuff does not need to go to the office to be deployed. It can literally go from Innovate directly to the end user. Um, you don't have to touch it in your office to set up. Innovate can get that all done through uh, autopilot. Um, you don't have to worry about you know physically getting hands on the devices. You can have anywhere, anywhere in the UK from the north is point of Scotland right down to uh, to Land's End um, in Cornwall, someone could have a device to them on the same day and be up and running. So we're, we're reducing downtime. Uh, reduction of costs. We don't have multiple point solutions. Licensing complexity. Um, I remember back in my first ever first job uh, was with, if anyone remembers, with Microsoft Cows um, back in 2006 was that. And that used to be a nightmare when it comes to licensing. Um, cows and everything else that came with it. Now the licensing is easy. You might click and drag, drag and drop. Who wants this license? I'm going to allocate this. It's easy to add, easy to downsize and upsize. Also reducing help desk costs. 80% of all help desks come through password resets. Uh, we can give you the power to do instant self-service password reset, as well as still staying compliant on all the stuff there. Also as well, enterprise grade technology. Um, the biggest benefit we have now is that the security included in business premium used to be a separate security product that was on um, 
uh, as your P1 or P2 uh, security add-on for an enterprise license. It used to be very expensive. You now get that included in business premium. So now there used to be a big split between enterprise products and normal products, so the SMB products, what we're looking at today. However, M365 is now one big family. So if you buy a business premium, um, you get the enterprise security in there. You get a lot of AI stuff in there um, and the best that the Microsoft can produce on there. So let's have a look, sorry, put me on this page. Um, let's have a look at the collaboration and security. Right, how can we communicate better? Well, first of all, Teams, Teams powers everything. Now, hopefully you will um, at least use Teams or seen Teams. I know we're using it today. Um, if you haven't, reach out to, to Innovate and, and either uh, those guys or those guys and me can, can run some Teams workshops with you and, and help you um, use it a bit better. But Teams kind of changed everything over lockdown uh, and changed how we worked. Right, the fact that we can use Teams now as a meeting platform, as a file sharing platform, as a chat platform, um, and also as as kind of your your front end of your SharePoint, um, really really changes it. It's one platform uh, to access um, all of your documents, one platform to power that collaboration, but also the security side of it as well. And as we're seeing today, you don't just have a cool feature; you have a webinar feature. You've got some of the new security features in there now as well, which are insane. Um, the fact that you can um, have uh, secure meetings now where people can't screenshot, they can't record, um, the built-in security such as um, watermarks going over the images, et cetera, et cetera, and the way that all the recordings and everything just integrate into your M365 environment. So as soon as the video is recorded, it goes straight onto your um, SharePoint. Once it's on your SharePoint, you can just literally ping it out and all the cool AI features that are up and coming. Right, so some real, real good stuff there. But let's have a look how Teams supports collaboration in some of those scenarios as well. Um, secure productivity is a term that we have banded around quite a lot. So let's look at that. So secure productivity um, goes across this. How do we protect people's identities and access? Um, well, first of all, MFA, multi-factor authentication. Um, I want to say this now that we are so far ahead in our personal life than we are in our business life. It hurts my feelings sometimes. Um, only from a geeky tech point. But you think multi-factor authentication, we use it every single day. Um, if we try and log on to Google Mail or banking or anything like that, um, I get a text uh, or a phone call or I have to use an app to, to authenticate myself. Microsoft are now pushing this out as a standard. And actually, if you use multi-factor authentication, it can prevent 99.9% .9 of all identity attacks. And it doesn't cost anything. We're not asking anyone to really reinvent the wheel or to do things they're not doing before. Um, you use biometric security day in, day out to unlock your mobile phones. We use multi-factor authentication either through text or anything like that. Um, so let's let's bring it as a, a normal into our business life as well. Because if someone loses business data, it can be catastrophic. It can be a huge, huge cost. It can be millions. Um, but the password list technology we use for multi-factor authentication um, is at the top there. Windows Hello. We said that's going to be a key baseline now in Windows 11 going forward. You've got Microsoft Authenticator. Um, and even if you don't take anything else from this session today, uh, apart from the speak to innovate at the end, uh, maybe about Copilot as well, um, download Microsoft Authenticator as a free app to be able to use um, all of your uh, security stuff on there. It's a real, real, um, really, really powerful tool. Uh, sorry, it, oh, my PC just absolutely stalled on me there. Um, OK, so we have that um, and then also as well, you can have uh, security keys or if you wanted to you have um, SMS or voice on there as well. So that's one that's now included. This is normally a paid subscription or a paid service with, with someone else. It's included for free in that or including the cost of a business premium. Um, if we're now going ahead and have a look at some more stuff. So that's how we uh, secure the user, how we make sure that the user logging on um, is the correct person. Now, how do we have a look at um, Conditional access. Now, as I said before, uh, Active Directory Premium P1, which is your enterprise security, is now included on there. And um, conditional access is one of my favourite things that Microsoft does in terms of security, and it's an it is an absolute beast when it comes to it. Basically, what it does is it uses AI to make sure that even if you've authenticated yourself onto a network or a user has authenticated onto your network, um, that your the behavior and everything that happens with it do not compromise your security. And what I mean by that, if I'm a user, I've got a log on, I authenticate onto 
uh, the network and it now looks at the four things in the middle it looks at where you are physically it looks at what device you're using what application you're using your behavior and your risk right and it will do all these four things here and it will continuously monitor this and if at any point it thinks something looks a bit dodgy um it will bait, either kick you off and get you to authenticate or it'll block access um to your business's data and what i mean by this um is you could have a policy set out saying that only people based in london can log in or only people based in the uk or if you've got business interest in maybe switzerland or russia or anywhere else you can put down all these different lists of places that can but all of a sudden um if the user authenticates which is a big tick the device is the correct device the application is fine the risk is fine but the location is maybe um north america or canada it won't let you access that network if all of a sudden uh, I, I had this kicked in on me, um, I was out in Turkey doing some training at two o'clock in the morning. I was downloading quite a lot of data from my SharePoint, building a presentation um, and it kicked me off the network and made me re-authenticate. What, but what we can also use this for is not only from the security preventing the user, but we can also say if people are joining and using their own devices, we can set out a minimum baselines of conditions here saying that, look, you've got to have a, a your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android or on a Mac or anything at all, but you've got to have the most up to date um, operating system or you've got to have a minimum of a six digit password. We don't have to install policies on people's devices, but we can absolutely lock down from there. All right, so it's really, really good. We can control when, where and who people connect. We can say that anything outside of business hours, certain teams can't access um etc etc um and we got security groups okay so security groups and dynamic groupings basically power stuff going forward and actually working with innovate on that if they can create like quite a nice little baseline onboarding and offboarding policy for you rather than having an, an individual user that you then assign rights and security rights to you actually have an onboarding process and put them into an active directory grouping because you get that or enter as it's now called um included um it makes life so much easier to be able to manage people Right, so we can really say who has access to what when they have access to it. Um, now, how can we, if, if that's looking after the identity, secure productivity from a, a data side or a data loss on here? Um, Defender for 0365, right? This is included in Windows, or sorry, Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, what does it do? Well, basically, it's this is your, your standard um, email teams link protection against any malware, viruses, uh, or anything uh, at all like that. So every time you click on a link, uh, every time you, uh, any link you click, any file you try and open, any website you go to, it will check it against this entire database that I said are on those 43 trillion signals a day that's being analysed. Um, and if you see something that's bad, uh, it will stop you accessing that, right? It will not only stop you accessing, it will also um, give you a notification or give your network manager a notification that something's been clicked on. This would be everything. It also gives you the um, something called ATP. So it used to be called ATP of Advanced Threat Protection. Now it's just called Defender for Office 365. Now, the reason it's called Defender for Office 365 is because it's for the Office applications. This is any link you click on. It might be, um, it doesn't just have to be email. Um, it could be any part of the script that runs in macros in Excel. It could be anything at all. OK, but if it interacts with the outside world, if it includes, you know, involves opening a file, um, this will block it and this will stop 99.9% uh, of malware 99.9% .9 of ransomware attacks 99.9% .9 of viruses any scripts being run yeah this is how powerful this product is it is genuinely incredible also as well information protection is one of the biggest ones we have uh, information protection um, it gives us the ability uh, to be able to um, set a policy at the top that's defined by user business to say what happens and how that document can be shared. Let me elaborate that to make it more clear because I've just confused myself with that one. Um, we probably use this already or you've used something similar to this. If you've ever shared a file on Outlook or Teams, you will notice that you get an option that says can view or can edit. So the recipient can view this file or can edit this file. This is basically this on steroids. Um, what you do is, is you as a business, um, so say me, I'm running an SMB, I will set out four or five policies that you can see at the top here um, with the orange logo around it. You can see we've got personal, public, general, confidential, or highly confidential. Right now, I would set these out as a, as a default set of policies as the administrator, and I would say uh, maybe I'm going to set my labels as um, internal, external, 
and highly confidential and sales. If I have a document that I set as external, it means that I can send that file to anyone through Teams, through email, and it doesn't matter what email address or what domain they're part of, that document could always be open outside of my organization. It can be forwarded, it can be, have any, it's, it's a normal document. If I set it as an internal document only, it only means that people that have actively logged on to my network, uh, they've authenticated, they're on my Active Directory, they can only access that file. Um, if they are part of my business. If it gets forwarded outside of the business, they can't open the document, they won't be able to do anything with it, which is quite cool. Kind of starts mitigating against accidental data loss or malicious data loss as well. Um, then if I go to one that says sales, I could have a sales grouping. Um, it's powered through Active Directory or Entra, um, and it means only people in the sales team can access this document. I can even set out um, labels and say it can only be open in business hours, Monday to Friday, nine to five. Right, so they can, if they try and open it outside of them, any other team tries to open it, they won't be able to see it on the SharePoint, they won't be able to see it on any searches or any, any AI, they won't be able to reference it, and if they try and open it, it'll just be a blank screen. And then I can have one called Highly Confidential. Now, Highly Confidential or Top Secret is possibly the best thing Microsoft do in terms of security on, on information protection, um, which is, is about to be called label classification. Right, so if you have a look for... Um, as your information protection, which is what this is, AIP. Um, it might also be called purview information protection. It could be called Windows information protection. It could, it could be called label classification. Um, I'll send something over to, to, to the guys at Innovate to, to forward out to you. Um, but if you see the word information protection or IP, this is what this is. Um, but the, the top secret one, or the feature they have on there is the ability to say, right, this document cannot be screenshotted. It can't be saved. It can't be put onto a physical device. It can't be sent outside the business. Um, it can only be seen by the person we're looking for. And it can also watermark as well. Because the laugh used to be that, you know, you can do all the security stuff, but nothing's going to stop me just taking a picture of the screen. And um, well, Microsoft has watermarking built into their products now um, to make sure that you can either watermark the user that's opened it. Um, you can have a personal identifier information number. You can have anything on that watermark tool um, to make sure that the wrong people don't see it. So that's on there. Some of the other features you got as well is, is the ability to stop um, uh, things like you can set policies out on information that's being sent across. Are we blocking credit card information? Do we want to make sure that no one can send credit card um, information on email, uh, personal identifiable information on email, et cetera, et cetera? All this can be blocked with a single click of a policy. You don't even need to know what the policies are. You just type in, I want to stop credit card information, press the button, it stops credit card information being sent. Real, real powerful tool, like really, really powerful on there. Um, I'm just going to jump across very quickly. Um, and then lastly, how do we protect devices? So Windows 11 will help you protect um, your device. Windows, uh, so Microsoft 365 will then help you uh, protect the authentication of the user. Then we've had a look at the file protection. Now, how do we look at device protection as well? Slide should resonate with you. Um, work data on personal devices. Oh, hell oh no, that is very bad. We don't want that. Um, if we lose that device, breach of GDPR, um, it's, it's a difficult one to manage. How do we make sure people can use the devices they want to use, but we still retain the security on there without having to put a nice big fat image on someone's personal device? Um, I took a detour. I went over to TikTok for two years in, in a training position there. Um, and they put an image on my personal device. When I left the business without any kind of let me know, they just decided to wipe the image. They deleted everything from my personal device. I was fuming when it happened. Um, and actually, we don't want that. We don't want to put images on people's devices. We don't want to restrict what they do in their personal life because there's going to come a bit of a uh, head bashing on that one. However, what we can do is we can put stuff in place to make sure that people use their own devices and we still retain some kind of control over the data, but not the device itself. And this is something really good that Microsoft have done. So you've got endpoint management now, right? And you've got two ways. We've got something called mobile device management, and we've also got mobile application management. And depending on what your business needs are, depending on how far you want to go with the security, depending on how far you have in terms of, do you have your own devices? Do you have uh, customer devices? Um, sorry, uh, you allow customers, end users to put their own devices on there and your kind of staff can do one or two things. So first of all, mobile device management, MDM, out of the box, really easy to click and set up. It's included through Intune um, and the SCCM policies there. Basically, you enroll any devices onto your network. You just join them on, you put a security policy on there 
Um, you can update the security, you can remote wipe it, you could do pretty much anything you traditionally want on a image device. But at the bottom, you have mobile application management. And this is where conditional access, that thing I showed you a moment ago, really kicks in and sets itself apart. So on conditional access, we can go through and we can say, look, um, great, you install Office onto your phone, you can log on to our network, but in order to log on, you have to have Authenticator on your phone, and you have to authenticate yourself every day if you want to access my files. You can even go through and say, look, that's fine, but you've got to have a minimum of a six-digit password or six-digit PIN code. You've got to make sure that you've got the most up-to-date operating system on there. Um, you, so you can define security policies just to access your data, but it doesn't encroach on the end user's device. And then as well, this is how it looks. Um, so on here, uh, you've got all the information at the top. You've got work um, apps, you've got Word, Excel, Outlook, Teams, everything else. Um, people log on, they authenticate, they can use it seamlessly. However, it means you can't do things such as saving files to your internal uh, iPhone storage or Android storage. You can't save something from Teams, you can't copy it and paste it onto iMessage. If you screenshot anything on a managed application, um, the screenshot will be blank. Right, you can't copy anything from the top to the bottom. You, you can't see, uh, as a business, you can't see anything that user does on their personal device, for personal wise, but you can absolutely manage the access to your data. So it's almost just going through that um, conditional access policy set out. It's really, really good. Um, and again, even blocking stuff being saved to Google Drive, you can make sure it only goes to OneDrive or anything that was a Microsoft solution on there. If we have a look on Defender for Business, now Defender for Business is worth its weight in gold. Um, and just to kind of put into context on here, um, I said earlier on, how much does it cost to, to do things on the internet to get, you know, to get bad stuff going on? Um, $250 to hire a, a hacker, that's probably gone down to about $50 now. So we're in a credit crunch, people do anything they can for money, especially when it comes to cybercrime. Ransomware, $60, $40. Uh, compromised PCs or devices, you're looking about 5p, 10p to a pound. Um, mobiles, people don't think you can infect mobiles, but you absolutely can. Um, and the good thing is Microsoft on the M365 Defender now actually covers all mobile devices from iOS and Android. Uh, it covers everything on there. And then you stolen passwords. It's not even 97 cents for a thousand. I could probably get you 100,000 in a minute for free. Netflix, Spotify, anything that's been leaked out there. Um, but why is that? Why is it? relevant we're looking at this is because Defender is also part of the Microsoft offering um, and all this targets the Defender uh, vulnerabilities and things that go on here. So endpoint protection, this is all what we've got to have a look at. Malware, phishing, ransomware, advanced attacks, vulnerabilities, asset discovery, signatures, antivirus exploits, vulnerability, application whitelisting, asset discovery, all this stuff here, this, this takes a lot to do. Right, and I feel your pain as an end user. I feel your pain trying to manage all of this. And um, also as well, ignoring the fact that me as an end user, I am stupid. I click links, I open links, I download files, I go on websites. I probably try and unknowingly try and uh, infect my database or infect my network probably four or five times a day because me as the end user, this isn't even mentioned on here. And when we come down to what security we look at, this slide blows my mind. Every single time I look at this, I look at this slide every day and I have a look at exactly uh, what we have to do to manage um, our security, and it's this. Right? Every single solution on here um, is something that we have to use. Every grey box is a product that we use. Now, we could use Kaspersky, we could use Cisco, Checkpoint, uh, might use a bit of um, Dell or RiskIQ, do this. We might have used stuff in the past, we've always used it and it works. But it's like I said with our, our personal life, we have to pay everything through different times of the month. We have to make sure they're all updated. We have to make sure that we have an onboarding and an offboarding policy for all of this. How do we make sure we've got the most recent updates? Is it vulnerable? Is it patches? Have we done stuff on here? Well, the good news is Microsoft can replace every single one of these products, right? Defender for Business, which is included inside um, Business Premium, can replace every single one of these products to a better score than you can get with these products. The reason is, is because every part of it works together from the moment you turn your device on to the moment you uh, turn the device off and you stop accessing it. And it looks like this. Right, Defender for Business is cloud powered, it's built in, and it doesn't take any resource off of your computer. 
it's all done through the cloud, but every step along the way, um, Microsoft have it. So rather than having it all segmented out, this is what it looks like. You know, you simplify it on board and administration. You turn this product on, um, you work with Innovate, you set your policies out, the click of a button, it is all protected on there. You got your threat and vulnerability management, attack surface reduction, you got your protection, you got your endpoint detection, and you've got your auto investigation and your remediation. It makes it so much easier than having 10 or eight or five different products on there. And everything goes through one window. You go to your administrator console, um, you go to your security, or you work with uh, Innovate to, or the managed side for your security, and through clicks of buttons, they can have it done. It's also integrated in APIs through most third party products. So they have like 300 products this will also integrate with alongside Teams, along M365, and it's going to be a prerequisite for Copilot as well when that comes out. Uh, so now it's out. Uh, M365 Business Premium is the prerequisite for Copilot because you need these security bits in place. Now, if we want to have a look at um, some of the elevation side of it, this is what it looks like. So first of all, we mentioned your security on there. This is enterprise stuff. This is P1 um, on there. Uh, this is what you used to have on the E3 and E5 licenses, but you get everything we looked at included so far. You get all the file defense, you get the identity the protection, you get everything else on there from everything uh, the demos I've shown you, but also you get instant response and vulnerability management. Um, GDPR compliance is a huge thing, right? Trying to tie in four or five different vendors to be GDPR compliant, be NIST compliant, the National Institute of Security Technologies, or as the NIST 2.0 update is coming out in April this year around AI. Um, I've been building this and it's quite challenging sometimes. Um, we want to make sure we're GDPR compliant, we're data compliant, we're governance compliant. M365 can do that for you with a baseline set of policies. Um, and also that baseline set of policies also applies to iOS uh, and to Android phones. And if there's any renegades on there using Linux, it also applies to Linux as well. OK, so really, and, and Max, every step along the way, we're now protecting you up there. And it's only and this is specifically designed for businesses under 300 users. So whether you're one employee, five employees, you can have the same protection that Microsoft will give out to an enterprise customer, such as the Ministry of Defense or Marks and Spencers or one of the, the, the big global conglomerates from, from there. And also as well, the cost effectiveness. Um, like I say, it's literally. What? It's eight pounds, seven pounds to have all of that in. It's crazy. Um, we're just going to go through and have a look at this. Um, already have some traditional AV running the company. Um, yes, you do, but there's you know some benefits on there. You've got 24 7 kind of mass global protection that's being um, fed back into it. Um, also, auto asset fixing, auto uh, response time, and AI powered on there. Um, and then we'll send these out so you've got it. Um, but basically, you can see that Microsoft is, in terms of strategies and capabilities, we are there in the top quadrant. Now, Kaspersky, you'll notice, are better than us in capabilities, but they are very good at one thing. And then you've got a couple of other companies that are good in terms of strategies, but Microsoft are there mainly because of the money they put into it um, to see. Now, um, I'm going to send the demos out afterwards um, just because I want to make sure we finish on time. I've got 10 minutes left to nail this off. Um, but basically, the demo that I'll send out for you, uh, and I'll give to uh, Michael and the team over at... Um, Innovate, but what you can do on here is we can, in fact, you know what, I'll just simulate an attack. Um, I'll do it very quickly. So if we simulate an attack here, uh, this is going to demo what happens when we have um, an attack on a network. So we can see that an email has been sent through. Um, you open up Word. We need to make sure we get the password for it. So the password's here. We pop the password back in. We open it up. I uh, will enable macros. Oh, great. Oh, no. Someone's uh, just deployed something to it, but people don't actually report that. So how do we do this now? Well, the administrator would see this straight away. So first of all, the administrator would get a notification on incidents. They'd be able to go onto here. Um, they'd be able to see everything that's happened throughout this incident. They'd be able to see the alert, what entities, what evidence, what was done, was it severe, was it not severe, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what was the outcome off the back of it? They can go onto the graph. Um, and they can see, right, oh, this is what's happened. We can see it went to Megan's PC. It was a demo. The alert pages and everything else um, really brings it to life. So it will say what the detection source was. Was it a breach of GDPR? Is there action points, descriptions, active alerts, everything? Right, so this is really, really powerful on there. And I'll send these demos out so you can have a look at them. And um, like I say, just because I want to make sure we get finished on time here. Um, but 
the whole part of it is it puts it back into the hands of the the administrator and innovate uh, because end users don't always report stuff that happens you know i uh, i've worked with businesses before they don't report blue screens you know blue screens are the biggest thing we should be reporting because it means something's going wrong now if we have a little look just on the recap on this in the next eight minutes um layered security so we've got identity security we've got device security application security and document security right all these things here play a part um in in what you have uh now the the biggest thing uh, alongside this is that really for you as a business to be gdpr compliant um to be managing your users to be managing communications um there's a lot of things that go into it but there's a huge amount of work that goes into it and i i actually um i feel for anyone that does run an sfb at the moment um because of the way the world is changing right like i said um lockdown for me was the single biggest turning point we had in, in the modern world in terms of productivity in terms of how we work but also setting the expectation going forward right we don't need to be in the office all the time now uh people are starting to actually realize that i can work quite far away from the office and businesses can also be quite flexible in who they offer jobs to we don't have to be geographically located to the office on there um on the back of that it also means that we have a challenge to make sure that the devices are set up correctly that the devices are secure correctly and if there's any problems with any of the devices um or any problems with any of the setups we can quickly remediate it um, and give people uh, as least downtime as possible but also the security stuff as we've seen through the, throughout the last kind of 50 minutes that i've talked security is the biggest thing that we have you know security now we've got gdpr compliance we've got nist compliance people attacking um data left right and center um we've got the explosion of ai that's now coming out as well and we're going to look at copilot in a second i'm going to have a little quick two minutes looking at that um and what exactly that is all this stuff mean that we need to be more secure than we ever have especially now working from home shared wi-fi's hotels anything like this events events are coming back with a passion uh, especially when no one did do any events for three years people are going a bit overboard now and spending huge amounts on events um as you see on the screen here microsoft cover you for everything like right, the identity security um device security so the on the identity security self-service password reset that's worth is probably its weight in gold I still do this. I have to reset my password sometimes to enter it because I, I can't remember what I set them to. I like to think I'm a security expert, but every week or two weeks when I change my passwords, I forget them the next day. Conditional access, dynamic groups, those two there will save you time in onboarding and offboarding, right? Making sure the right people have access to the right data. And if you want to go into AI or start having a look at mass AI deployment, whether it's Copilot, whether it's Grok, whether it's anything from from Google, but specifically it would tie it in nicely onto the M365. Um, you need these set up anyway. And even if you don't want to set up AI in the future, having these in place and having that kind of baseline is, is the best thing to do. When it comes to device security, you know, Microsoft Defender, you got antivirus, centralized management, remote data loss um, on stolen devices. We're not actually remote and, uh, remote destroying the end user's device. We're actually just taking off our corporate data. You know, BitLocker encryption um making sure strong pin requirements that wi-fi is on there you're not connecting on share you can even block connecting on shared wi-fi that's a massive powerful one um application security this is the biggest thing on there um don't forward encrypt email making sure emails can't be screenshotted or anything like that and even if it is forwarded you can track who it's gone and where it's gone to and then the document security couple that with with windows 10 going into support to windows 11 um there's quite a nice little proposition now around the m365 and the uh, windows piece there so that's kind of everything we have you know the world has changed the way we interact with each other has changed the way our data needs has changed um security needs have changed hence why microsoft put windows 10 in the support hence why we now have windows 11 hence why m365 has exploded and the kind of thing i'll leave you on on this just to have a little think about <coughs> is that i mentioned it briefly before we are so far ahead in our personal life that we are in our business life that we need to play a bit of catch up quite soon and that is across everything we are more secure in our personal life we are more we're, we live in a cloud environment in our personal life you know if i need more storage on my phone i don't buy an sd card um i just pay apple 99p a month and i get five gig or 10 gig or whatever it is um if i want to back my stuff if i buy a new device i don't have to download it all to a hard drive and 
save it, physically save it. I can literally just put the device to the next job and press a button and I live in that cloud environment. So we find ourselves in an accidental cloud and an accidental AI environment. So let's push that through. Let's take advantage of all the cool stuff we've got, kind of do more of less in our M365, M365 life. Now I'm going to very quickly touch on Copilot um, because it'd be something to have worth having a chat with Innovate for. And if you want to run any workshops or want us to do a demo, absolutely um, we run a demo and, and get onto this for you. But Copilot is Microsoft's offering for AI um, that is included in M3. Well, it will be built into M365 um, and it's going to change the way we work. I've had this now for a couple of months. And it's absolutely insane. But just to hit on this, um, Copilot is not Microsoft's first AI venture. Um, if anyone remembers Clippy, hopefully some of you get a laugh out of this. Clippy was about uh, in Windows 97 and Office 97, um, or sorry, Windows NT and Office 97. Uh, and Clippy used to be able to help me write letters to my friends. And that's what it was. Clippy and Ask Jeeves was kind of like the the inception of, of AI uh, into the, the personal world. Um, Clippy was great and annoying. Ask Jeeves used to be able to answer a question um, as a smart assistant. <laughs> Now, Microsoft put 11 billion in over the last 25 years. And you've got M365 Copilot, which is a fully functional AI assistant on there. Um, and it is going to basically change the world. The reason why we say it's going to change the world is um, if we have a look at how quick it took to get adopted into the workplace. So ChatGPT, so Microsoft owned ChatGPT, which is what Copilot is based on. Um, it took three months to get 100 million users. Um, took Facebook four and a half years, took the internet seven years. So actually 61 days to get 100 million users onto ChatGPT because it's great. Um, and the reason it is great is because at first people went, oh, can you write me a poem? Can you write me a song? Oh, can you write me a LinkedIn bio? And everyone had really good LinkedIn bios. But then people saw the opportunity that actually, Copilot, can you write me PowerShell scripts? Can you write me Visual Basic? Can you write me a marketing plan? Et cetera, et cetera. Some real, real powerful stuff in there. Uh, and, and basically what Copilot can do um, is absolutely insane. So I'm going to share with you one short video that's going to be one minute long. Uh, and then we're going to close up and do the Q&As. Um, but I just need to reshare my uh, screen with the audio on there. So bear me two secs. Let's just have a look at this. Um, turn the volume up. Let's go. Sure, the volume is up enough. All right, let's do it. Thank you. 